Hanukkah means literally, it's a Hebrew word, Hanukkah means the dedication or rededication. Um, and it's celebrated, you know, most people think of Hanukkah, even Jewish people think of Hanukkah, it's, as you said, the Jewish Christmas. It's really not. But a kind of lighthearted holiday, we light the candles, you know, this, this is actually a menorah that is the seven-branch one. Now, Hanukkah is a nine-branch one for the, for the eight days and one to light it. I see. But, but this is... This, this is, the Hanukkah menorah actually is based on this one. This is the seven branch of the temple. That's what the Hanukkah branch is, a holiday version of the seven branch, you know, candlestick in the temple. And so this is what it's about. And, you know, there are gifts. It's kind of lighthearted. Eat potato pancakes. Right. Do the dreidel. Nice little Jew. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, it's the Jewish Christmas. You know, you know my, my friends had Christmas. We had Hanukkah. You know, that's basically. Do you get presents? No, you get presents every day. You get, you get eight presents, yeah. Oh, you're better off than we are. Well, then, right? if you do the 12 days of Christmas, we're not. If you do one, we, we are. <laughs> you, know, you know, Jewish people are, you know. <laughs> so, you know. So, uh, so, but the thing is, it's this nice little Hanukkah, but it's really not a nice little holiday. It's one of the most amazing, amazing revelations of the end times of any holiday given by God. Now, now in the, in the Bible, you have trumpets. You do have some end time things there. You've got the Feast of Trumpets and Tabernacles, which have end time things about it. But Hanukkah is the most, has the most specific revelation of the end times. And so many people miss it. Prophecy people miss it. Jewish people certainly miss it. Christians miss it. This thing holds probably the most exact, precise revelation of what's going to happen in the end times. Wow. Also, also, the strategy of how to overcome in the end times is in, is in this revelation. Um, and, you know, people don't realize, if you ask, where is it in the Bible? You know, if you ask, where is Hanukkah celebrated yeah, in the where Bible? where is it in the Bible? Well, well the thing <laughs> is that, well, that's that. interesting, that Hanukkah, Hanukkah is only celebrated in the New Testament. It's wow. only in the New Testament. People don't realize this. I mean, it's a great thing to witness to Jewish people. You say, where's Hanukkah in the Bible? It's prophesied in the Old Testament. Daniel prophesies of it, but it doesn't happen. It happens in the middle of the Old and New Testament. It only appears in the New Testament. And the one who celebrates it is Jesus. Yeshua, Messiah, is the one who celebrates Hanukkah. Mm. And, and you find it in the book of John, John 10. Mm -hmm. And it, the problem is when they translated it into the Greek and into English, mm -hmm. you can look at it and you don't even realize it's Hanukkah. It says in John 10, it says it was wintertime and Messiah was in the temple in Jerusalem. It was wintertime in the, port, the porch of Solomon. It says, and it was the feast of dedication. Oh. Dedication is how we read it, so nobody knows. Dedication in Hebrew is Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Oh, it's Hanukkah. So the one who celebrates, the, the one who, and the only one in the Bible who celebrates Hanukkah is Jesus. Jesus, the one, the one that centers on Christmas, we don't know that he celebrated Christmas, but he celebrated Hanukkah. <laughs> so the one who, you know, so there's a connection right there. Oh, it's yeah. all, and that's a great thing, again, a witnessing tool to Jewish people. Where, sure. You know where Hanukkah is in the Bible? New Testament. Oh. It's John 10. Messiah celebrates Hanukkah. And as he does, and that's when he's revealing, I am the one. I mean, right there, his, he gives a Hanukkah speech. And then, and the thing about it is, the other connection is that without Hanukkah, you would not have Christmas. Hanukkah brought Christmas because if there was no Hanukkah, the faith of Israel would have been wiped out. And that we'll get into it. But it would have been gone. The biblical faith would have been gone. There would be no, G no Mary, no Joseph, no, no apostles. No, they wouldn't be there. So Hanukkah brings Christmas. So, so it is a very, a, a, a feast that, Jew, that not only Jewish people should know about, or, you know, there, I know many Christians who actually like the menorah, but it's something that has everything to do with our faith. So mm. it very much, and that, that's just where it is. But then on top of it, you've got this end time revelation oh. that is so filled with things, mm. which we, we can get into. I want to do that. Yeah. Can, can we, we do, do it, it now? It. Yes, we can do it now. I want to do it. Yeah. I'm an end time preacher. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, the first thing, the first clue about Hanukkah, and we'll, we'll get, we can get it, we'll get it. In order to understand it, you, want, you need to know the story of it. But before that, to even say this, uh, for instance, the, the, the history of Hanukkah, the record is not in the, is not the Bible proper. It's in the book of Maccabees. That, they record it. But it is history. It's real, and God was in it. God was doing this. Because, mm -hmm. again, if he didn't do it, you'd have no Messiah coming. Right. So God was in Hanukkah. And so it's recorded in the book of Maccabees. That's history. You can, it's not the Bible. We can use it as history. Mm -hmm. And so what it says is, it says that, it says, it speaks about what they did. It speaks about uh, this, it, it talks about this man called Antiochus who was this, this king we're going to get into. But this has everything to do with the end times. Mm -hmm. And it speaks about something that, that the book of Daniel prophesies of it. So the book of Daniel says, so you read the end of Daniel, 
it says, it speak, it, he speaks about Antiochus. He speaks about the events of Hanukkah. And he speaks about, the, and what he says is, he says, how long, he, what Antiochus did is he desecrated the temple. Sound familiar? Mm. He, he, he uh-huh. desecrated the temple and he, he caused the sacrifices to cease. And says, so for how long is this going to be? And, and the answer given in Daniel, in the original version, mm-hmm. it says it will be for a time, times, and half a time. Mm-hmm. A time is a year, times is two years, and half a time is three and a half years. Mm-hmm. So Hanukkah, you begin to have this figure of three and a half years is all about this thing about Hanukkah. But then when you read Daniel, who speaks about this, he also speaks about the end. He says, the people of the prince who will come will destroy the city. He speaks about the Antichrist. The people who destroyed the city were the Romans. He's saying the, the, the people, the prince who shall come, he will make a covenant for a week. It's a year, seven, eight. He says in the middle of the week, he'll turn against this. The middle of the week, that's three and a half years. That's times, times. That's the Hanukkah number mm. you find in the end times. Then when you read the book of Revelation, you see it, yeah. says, it says, Revelation 11 I was given a reed like a measuring rod and told, go and measure the temple of God, the altar, count the worshipers there, but keep, don't measure the outer court. They will trample the holy city for 42 months. How long is 42 months? Three and a half years. Yes. That's the Hanukkah. That's the Hanukkah number. Times, time, the ha- three and a half years. Mm-hmm. Then, Revelation 12, verse 6, is the woman fled into the desert, yes. place prepared. She was going to be taken care of for how long? 1,260 days. How long is 1,260 days? Mm-hmm. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. All ago. that. So all right away, you're seeing that Hanukkah is the beginning of all this revelation that comes back in the book of Revelation. And so what, here's the, to understand well, this. What does it do yeah. with Antichrist? Three and, and a half years. Has, and Hanukkah has Am I a, getting ahead yes, of myself? Yes. No, you're, mean, right. you're, you're absolutely but right. But that's, that, you, oh, you all know, three and a half years, that's where the, the and then the, the seven years, and then the three and a half is Antichrist. Yes. What does this have to do with Antichrist it, in Hanukkah? It was all, it's all revealed in Hanukkah. The whole, the Antichrist is revealed in Hanukkah. The end times are revealed in Hanukkah. The persecutions revealed in Hanukkah. What's happening in America is revealed in Hanukkah. It's all there. And the thing is, and so the thing is, for instance, here's another one. You know, Daniel speaks about this desecration of the temple. And they called it back then, they called it the abomination desolation. But that was Hanukkah. That had to do with. But then Messiah says. When you see what was spoken of by the yes. prophet Daniel, it's, gonna, it's not just what happened, it's going to happen again. Yes. What happened in Hanukkah is going to happen in the book of Revelation. Oh, my so Lord. So it's all there in Hanukkah specifically about, it's going to touch everything that's happening right now. Even what, what we were here to pray about, what happened in America. It's all there. Mm-hmm. And people, and people you know, are innocently celebrating this thing without realizing oh. how incredible. And it's going to give also the strategy of how to overcome in the end times. So but Jesus says the abomination, the desolation, will take place before he returns. That's right. And people say, oh, no, no. Everybody seems to be teaching that the Antichrist uh, will not be revealed till after Jesus comes back. But yet Jesus says the opposite. Isn't that right? Yes. And you're teaching yes. this. This is the most in-depth teaching on this I've ever heard. Yeah. I, I go, yeah don't they, let they, me interrupt you. Let's go on. No, this is, and, and this is actually, you know, licking just a link to the harbinger, is if you say, well, how does this all go together? When you notice, when you look at the end times, you don't see America as the head of nations specifically mentioned as the head of nations. Oh. So the point is, what is the harbinger is kind of filling in the gap? That it's between now and then, if America doesn't turn back, this is what's going to happen. It's going to set up another world system when you don't have this, this present American-led thing. So now we're sort of taking the big picture, where the big picture is the end times, and is, is a time where, with, with, where, where what we know now as America is, is, has ended before this happened. So we are, we are watching this happen. And for, to understand this, Jim, and to, and for, for, to understand Hanukkah, to understand where this, this is going to open up everything. And by the way, there's probably tons of stuff that I, I haven't seen, but that are there. Oh, so it's all it's there. amazing. And so the first thing is, to, you gotta, we got to know the story of Hanukkah in order to understand it. This is the blueprint. Just like with the Harbinger, you have a blueprint yeah. of what's going to, yes. ancient yeah. Israel, you have America, yes. Yes. And you have a blueprint of the end times. So what happens? This is what happens. It's in between Old and New Testament. You have, you have Israel. Okay, they've been restored. They have a temple, all that. But what happens is a new civilization rises up, the Greek civilization. They want to make everybody the same, a one-world system. They want everybody to come into the system. So they want Israel to give up their faith. So what happens is a man rises up. His name is Antiochus. It even sounds like the Antichrist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Antiochus in, in the Greek. Oh. An- Antiochus king... Antiochus, his full name is Antiochus Epiphanes. He gets up and he, 
he, what he does is he declares, the book of Acts says, he says, Every, his kingdom shall all be, they will all follow the gods of the Greeks. They will follow Zeus. And he says, every nation must give up its tradition, give up its gods, give up whatever it has, and they will all come into this. Well, people start doing it all over the kingdom to become this one world system. Yeah. And what happens is, and there's one people who cause a problem. There's one people who just don't fit into the system, always. They never fit in. And guess which people that is? Israel. They just never fit in. And so, always a problem. So he says, you know what? I'm going to wipe them. I'm going to wipe out this faith. And if he did this, this is the enemy, because the enemy knows that Jesus is coming. If he can wipe this out, he tries to wipe it out. Then he tries, yeah, yeah. Just, just like, I'm, I'm a, a little tangent, same thing when Israel was going to come back as a nation in 1948 and all the prophecies are going to be fulfilled, guess what the enemy does? He raises up Hitler to try to destroy right. Israel. Because if he does it, he stopped all the prophecies. So that's why it's so satanic. Well, even before, before Messiah comes, comes this. this. It's an attempt to destroy the faith of Israel, make everybody apostatize. So he puts the laws. What he does, is he goes into the temple, into the holy place, and he sets up an idol in the temple. Does that sound familiar? Mm. He sets up an image in the temple, mm. and he slaughters a pig in the temple to desecrate the Ugh. temple. So it is called the abomination desolation. Oh. It makes the holy place desolate. And so for three and a half, for, the, or for this time period, he abolishes all sacrifices to God, and he, the temple becomes a pagan temple, the temple of God. A pig is a very unclean am, animal in Bible days. Yes. Old Testament. Still, yes. Still, yes. Yeah. Still yeah. Not, not very clean. Just, <laughs> Sorry, you pig farmers. Don't get no. mad at us. But yeah. they really, and so it was an abomination that yes. bring a pig. yes. It's so a, opposite of a lamb. Exactly, exactly. Because the spirit, and we're going to get into it, because we're going to get into the spirit of the Antichrist. People, are, you know, people look for the Antichrist, which is you know, one thing, but the point is people don't realize the bigger picture. The spirit of the Antichrist is already working and already affecting our lives as we get closer. And that's revealed in Hanukkah. So what happens is, so he desecrates it. The temple of God, the holy temple, becomes a pagan temple. It becomes a desecrated, unholy, uh, the house of God, they have... They have uh, they have pagan celebrations in it. They, it's darkened. It becomes, they, have, they have sexual from immorality in the temple. And it's off limits. No Jewish person can go up there and, celebrate, and worship God. Then he says, we're going to persecute the people of God. Anybody caught with a Bible or a scroll is going to be killed. And they start burning scrolls, burning Bibles. They say anybody who observes the Sabbath is going to be killed. Anybody who teaches their children in the ways of God will be killed. Anybody, we're going to, in fact, we're going to force across Israel, we're going to force people to worship the, the Greek gods. So they, they force people to sacrifice, to, they set up altars all over the land of Israel. And it looks like he's going to wipe out the faith of the, of the Bible. It's going to be gone, which, in which case we would never be saved. So this is the enemy doing it all over. It looks like he's going to win, and, and, and people across Israel start going along with it. This is the time, this is the way the times are going. We better just go along with it. We'll go along with the Greeks. We'll go along with this. We'll, we'll, we'll walk around naked in the gymnasiums. We'll build up the, we'll be like the Greeks because that's, we'll do that. So they start going along with it. Even religious people start going along with this apostasy. All happening, it's going to be wiped out. Except that God has a different plan. And from, from the middle of nowhere, from the hill country of Judea, people who are kind of not in the world system, they're going to, a family called, it's Matth his name was Matthew or Mattathias, and he has these sons. And he, he's watching as, the, as they're forcing people to sacrifice to this, and he says, I will not do that. And he says, he says Far, I will never follow away from God. He, he raises up, he, he starts a resistance. He heads for the hills because they're going to be persecuted. He and his sons, one is called Judah one, or Yehuda, one is called Jonathan, Jonathan, uh, and they, they get, are given the name the Maccabees. That's where you get the name Maccabees. Mm. And so they, get, they go up to the hills. They don't know how to fight. They don't know how to do anything. They say, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna resist this. What happens is they, the Greeks send an army against them, and miraculously the Greeks lose against them. They take the weapons. They didn't have weapons before. They outman it. And then they, they, then they send another army against them. They win again. Then they send another. They say, "Whoever's for God, come with us. Leave the world. Come the mountains. Come. Whoever's for God, you got to make a stand. You cannot just go along with this." People start joining them. Another army comes. Miraculously, they win again. And then, then they look at the, they were looking at all the numbers. They say, "We're outnumbered. We don't even know how to do this." They say, "But but with God, it doesn't matter how few we are. It doesn't matter if we're the minority. We're going to win." And so they pray. They literally pray and fast. They fast and pray. 
And they win. And finally, you know, Antiochus, who actually we're going to talk about him as the shadow of what he does. He is the shadow of the, of the, the Antichrist the Bible gives. But he sends his, half of his entire army of the kingdom into the little land of Israel with elephants and all that to wipe them out completely. And the Maccabees win against Antiochus. They win, and so it's all gone. They come up to the temple. They look at the temple, and they see this pagan place, desecrated, defiled, all these things, the idol that the, that the Antiochus set up. They take it out. They smash it. They take it. They, they find the temple. They reconsecrate everything. They reconsecrate. They find the lamp, the, the candle, you know, or, the, or they re, redo it, which had been gone. No light. The light of God. They put it back. They light the lights of the menorah. And there is, a, there is a story later by the rabbis that there was a miracle of oil. That's, a, that's legend. Okay. But what they did is they light, they light it and they celebrate. They dedicate the temple by lighting the menorah, the light of God. And this becomes the lights of the Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the rededication of the temple. So here they rededicate it, victory. They, they cleanse themselves. They, everybody repents and cleanses themselves. The temple is back and Israel becomes a nation again unto God, and Messiah comes. Now that is Hanukkah. Now Hanukkah... Now, Woo, isn't that a good... Wow! We would not... Again, none of us here would be saved. Which is Christmas, if, if, too. If it, if Christmas is coming. <laughs> and, it, and it would never happen if this didn't happen. So God was in this. And the thing is that, and to this day, so Jewish people are, are lighting the lights of the menorah. So, yes. But they don't, most Jewish people don't even realize why they're doing it. They're celebrating a temple that doesn't exist. It hasn't been a temple for 2,000 years, except it says that we are the temple. Which, by the way, Hanukkah has a message to us, too. And so, as far as the end times. So that is the blueprint. This is the blueprint of the end time revelation. And from this, you're going to see, you're already, as I'm talking, I can see wow. your, your things are clicking yeah. oh. because it's going to have all sorts, it's going to tell us all sorts of things about what is happening, what will happen, and how to, re, how to resist. And so that's where we can go now. You want to open it up. But, but this is something where people would have no idea as they celebrate this. Get my, get, anyway, I got a gift. I got this. I have no idea how right. deep this thing is. Yeah. This, I want to hear more yeah. of this. Go yeah. on. The first thing is to know, how did, they, how did this even happen? How could this, this happen to Israel? Well, the first thing that you don't always get when you read this and when you hear the story of Hanukkah, you don't always get the real thing. What happened was before this all ha- took place, the people, of, the people of Israel already started to apostatize. They started following the ways of the Greeks. In fact, the priesthood started getting corrupt. And they actually took in, they actually, they're the ones who led Antiochus into the temple to desecrate it. They led him in. So the, the first key is, before any of this happened, it could not have happened unless the people of God started to, to apostatize and compromise. And what it tells us about the end times, first thing, is everything we're seeing in America, everything we're seeing in the world, could not happen if, the, if and we mentioned this before, if the light of God was shining as the light of God needs to shine. Wow. We could not happen if there wasn't apostasy. What it's saying is the end times will be first, the people, there will be apostasy that will allow this, the salt of the earth. And so you look in the world, you look in America, and you look in it, and you see all sorts of, number one, denominations. Mm. First of all, that used to be the mainline denominations that have completely apostatized as such. You know, that, that are, that are, that are, that are sanctifying abominations, mm-hmm. that are for abortion, mm-hmm. that have nothing to do with God, yet they represent God, and that, that has taken them right out of the picture to be the salt or the light of America. So that's the first thing, is apostasy. We even see apostasy even beyond that, in the evangelical world. I mean, we see, in the, and we, we've spoken about this before, but the, where the main emphasis is prosperity. The main emphasis is, I want to be more comfortable. That is not... God. God will bless, but that's not, that is not, that is a way of compromising with the world. There is, the, if, if we as the body of Messiah were, as we were supposed to be, the salt of the earth, salt preserves, it could never get as rotten as it was, now, as it is now. Not that they, people still do what they can do, but we would have been a preservative. So the first warning, the first message of Hanukkah is for the people of God, because that's how it all happened. That's how it all began. The Antichrist could not come and will not come. On, uh, except there's apostasy first. Paul said it. Yeah, he said, away. And what is, yeah, and what is apostasy? Apostasy is that those who knew God or those who were there are no longer there. Mm-hmm. So you have a culture. So the first thing about the end times is that it's not a culture that didn't know God. It, it happens to a culture that once knew God. That's uh, worse because that's a pagan culture, you get Nero, you get Caligula, you get that. But at, when, you get, when you get a post-Christian culture, you get Hitler's, 
you get Stalin's, you get Holocaust, you get the Antichrist. So the first thing to, about this whole thing is, it's not just the end times come. The end times are about a culture, a civilization that once knew God, turns away from God, becomes worse than if it had never known God. Because sure. now it's anti-God. You know, and now, it, now, it, now it's, it has, there's a demonic presence. You, now you have a spirit of Antichrist. Before, you can't have a spirit of Antichrist unless you have the Christ first. You have because right. it's a rejection of Christ. That's worse. Mm-hmm. What's, if Amer- as America turns from God, it's going to be worse than if America never knew God. Mm-hmm. Because for, you, have yeah. things, you have things happening now that didn't even happen in Sodom. You never had marriage about, uh, that, that celebrated these things. So the thing is that it is worse now. So to understand this, that the culture of Israel wasn't, Israel wasn't a nation that didn't know God. It was a nation that had its whole culture twisted on itself. It, it was warring against its own foundation now. Mm. It was a, that's what's happening in America. Wow. It's, that's what's happening in Western, in Western Europe. That's what's happening in Western Europe. And it doesn't come until that happens first. So first the nation has to, the first the world, the gospel has to go forth to the world. But then this is the rejection it becomes worse. That's when the, that's when the Antichrist can come. Wow. From the Old Testament. The, the blueprint is already there amazingly. I mean, the, the keys where things like that three and a half years is alerting you that this God already gave you the plan. He already yeah. gave you the thing. Yeah. And it's happening, and what we don't realize, if we can, as you take, if you take every characteristic of the Antichrist and you apply it to the spirit of the Antichrist, you'll see it right now that you're dealing with, you wonder, like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? It's happening until it's manifest in him. And for instance, you spoke of the beast. Daniel, he describes the fourth beast. And the way he describes it, he says, this, this fourth beast, this fourth, was different from all the other beasts. You know, it was different, it was strange, it was exceedingly terrible. He's talking about this fourth revived Roman, you know, the whole, the whole bit, which is focused on the Antichrist. The word he uses in Hebrew is the word shena. And what that means, and, and that same word comes up in the story of Hanukkah. When, the Antichrist, when Antiochus rises up, it says that he, he, he sought to change all the laws and all, all the customs. He made everything new. I'm going to change Whatever you knew as tradition, I'm going to change it. Whatever you knew of this, 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 I'm going to wow. change what you knew. And so he does that. The word, the word used, Shana, it's the same word used of that fourth king, that beast, Shana, which means the changed or altered kingdom. And so what, what this is saying right now, Revelation... Mm-hmm. That as it goes on, the spirit of Antichrist, working through all things, government, everything, is going to seek to change all traditions, change all that you've known, and, and it's going to be a different, it could be, it could be translated as a changed, different kingdom, an unnatural civilization. Oh my. That fourth beast is unnatural. That's yeah. the word Shana. It's a changed thing. So what we're watching is it's going to, the, the, the spirit of Antichrist is seeking in this world to change the natural order. That's why you have the changing of, of going away from faith, going away from marriage, going away from, from, uh, uh, from manhood, womanhood, uh, right. parenthood, right. childhood, right. everything. That right. is the spirit of Antichrist. Wow. That's why it's happening. That's why we're seeing things happen in America. That's why things are changing. Because the spirit of Antichrist in, the book, in, the, in Hanukkah and in Daniel is the spirit that seeks to change what is natural for what is unnatural. Oh. One of the things that is revealed in this blueprint, in this revelation, it says in Maccabees, it says that it says they, they installed a sinful people or perverse men basically in positions of power. Now, let me share what this has to do with now. Okay, what it's saying, and the word is used, the word is used of perversity here. Now, what is this saying about end time culture? What it's saying is this, that in Israel what happened is that People who never would have been in power were put in power. People who would have been on the fringes, who would have said, no, you're sinful, you you don't do this, were suddenly lifted up. While the people who followed God's words, who in times past would have been lifted up as heroes or as models, all of a sudden it was switched and, though, and, and they were pushed on the fringes. They were considered fringe now. And while, while what was fringe becomes mainstream, the mainstream becomes fringe, what was, what was in, in hiding now becomes the, the, the way of the, wor- of the nation. And those who were doing God's will become, go into hiding. Mm-hmm. So what, it shows this reversal of what's going on. And that is exactly what happens in the end times. And in America, it's happening now. That people who simply lifted up God's word, past times they would have been leaders, they would have been heroes, they would, all of a sudden are put 
are pushed out and are treated as if they were immoral, troublemakers, intolerant, all these people. <laughs> That's what happened back then. That's what Antiochus did. He switched it. While the people who were going against God in times past, when the nation was following God, said, no, you don't do that. All of a sudden, they are now elevated and they become the leaders of culture. They become leaders of government. They become leaders of, of the instructional system with our children, models. And so what happened, one thing that we noticed, you know, and, and is that, that one thing that you're not seeing is you don't see in me, most media anymore, except Christian media, you don't see Christians depicted much, number one, real Christians reading, praying. Right. And you don't, and when they are depicted most of the time, they're, they're depicted as there's something wrong with them. Yeah. You know, they're the, they're the, they're the axe murderers. Yeah. There's something like that. Well, that's almost like the, the spirit of the Antichrist setting it up for persecution. Mm -hmm. Because the new generation is saying, oh, no, no, this is good. It says, well, they'll call good evil, evil good, and good people will be called evil. And so what's happening is, well, as Christians are being now pushed into the closet, in a sense, that, that just be quiet, don't say anything, don't say what you really feel, right. just like Antiochus, wipe it out, and it starts with culture, then it becomes laws, and then it becomes persecution. Ah. But exactly it's the pattern of the Antichrist. It's the pattern in Hanukkah. They actually had to go, they had, they had to go, go into hiding, literally. So the thing is that we're watching this reversal of culture. It's happening all over. And that's what we just saw in America with this change. And so that, that, is, that is what's happening. And things that, you know, it's as good as evil, evil is good. What happened right. with, with the Antichrist right. is what was, what was holy becomes, what was actually profane is, becomes holy. They put the idols in the temple. By the way, you talk about idols. There are idols in the temple, symbol of idols in the house of God, which you were just talking about. That's the apostasy as well. But here, here the, the, the unholy things are put into the holy place. They treat the unholy as holy. So what before was considered unholy, sinful, is now celebrated. That's what happened in Hanukkah. That's what's going to happen in the end times. That's what's happening in America. And what was holy is now considered to be profane. You speak that, it's like a curse word. Don't bring up Jesus. Don't say that there's a right way. That's almost like a curse word. People shout down. They instinctively persecute someone who says this right. now. One of, the, one of the spirit of Antichrist, which is in Hanukkah, is the, that of the spirit of arrogance mm. and blasphemy. Mm. And one of the things we're seeing in the culture, people are so looking for the Antichrist, they don't realize it's already happening. Yeah. This spirit, you're watching a spirit of arrogance in the culture. You're a, a spirit of pride and a spirit of blasphemy. It says in Daniel, there was a beast. He was, he was given uh, a bit, ability to utter blasphemies. It says about, the, about Antiochus, Hanukkah, this guy got up. He started, he started uttering blasphemies against God. And so what is it saying? In the end times, there will be a spirit of blasphemy. What's mm -hmm. that? Well, how do we see this now? Mm -hmm. Things that we would never have imagined on television or on television now. Never. Things, never. We would, things that we would, for instance... This is something that people don't miss, they don't realize. Do you, you realize that years ago, Jesus and God would never be the subject of comedy? No. Never. No. Never. You would never, never touch upon never. it. Now you can turn on, you can see cartoons of God. Yeah. You can see depictions of Jesus as mockery. And God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. This is the spirit of blasphemy. Right. Things said that would never be said. People can freely say also in the name of tolerance. This is an interesting tolerance. Uh -huh. They can say whatever they want against uh -huh. God and against, against the faith. But when it comes to believers, simply saying, no, no, I don't believe that's right. Or believe, as we saw last time I was here, we saw the whole thing with Chick-fil-A. I, right. I believe in marriage, man and woman. Very right. simple. Yeah. He was treated as if he was the blasphemer. Right, yes. And so what happens is that it, this tolerance becomes an intolerance. The spirit of, of Antiochus, he said, you know, we said like, hey, let's do whatever we want. No, it's not really tolerance. It's only tolerance of evil. And what happens is, what, what it turned out is Antiochus ended up saying no believer will be tolerated. So the end of all, the first it's saying let's have tolerance. But we're, when you keep going to stage three, stage four, stage five, what is tolerance all of a sudden becomes the only thing. And anyone who speaks against it, you are now not tolerated. Okay. So that is, that's exactly what's happening. That, it's, it's the exact thing, and that is the spirit of Antichrist, who ultimately, this is not tolerance. Mm. This is not freedom. Mm. It is simply saying good is evil and evil is good. It's switching everything we have known, which is exactly what sets the stage for Antichrist. You know, and there, and, and, and there's, there's more. For instance, well, another thing of the Antichrist. What, what does Antiochus do? It says, this is in Maccabees. Listen, this is the blueprint. Then the king wrote to the whole people that all the kingdom shall be one people. 
What is the spirit of the age? Is that the world will be one world system. It's happening economically, and the fact that things we wear are made all across the world. It's happening culturally. It's happening with the internet, and ultimately, it's going to happen politically. That is all setting the stage. We are witnessing the beginning of a one world civilization. And the thing, and what happened when when Antiochus sure. did that? What was the one? place that just didn't fit in? Israel. What is the one place that just never fits in with the United Nations, never fits in with anything, is Israel. And spiritually, we are the spiritual Israel, so we are the ones who don't fit in spiritually. The people of God are the ones who stand out. Mm. And the nation of God is Israel. I mean, it's physically. So we are, in the end times, that which is going to stand in the way is Israel and the people of God. And it's no accident that now, more than any other time in the history of the world, Jewish people and True Christians are being joined together in the same boat. It has not been since the book of Acts. There is the greatest friends that Israel have are born-again believers. It has never happened before. The world is turning against each of them. And the same generation, we spoke about what's happening in America. The same time that America is turning away from God, it's also turning away from Israel. It's trained with Israel. And that, that, is, that, is, and that is what is declared as enemies of the state or enemies of, uh, of this and the time. Now, here's another thing here, another mystery from Hanukkah about the end times. There is a, who was the, when he set up the idol in the temple, what was the idol? The idol was an idol of Zeus, who was kind of like the anti-god. He's the the substitute for the almighty Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Sets up his, and they they even say this, there's even a, there's even a a hint that, that Antiochus made this image to look like him. So you got man, and here's another thing. Antiochus, his last name he was called Antiochus Epiphanes. Now, does that sound familiar? Epiphanes. What what his name meant? Listen, is Antiochus. It means Antiochus God manifest. He called wow. himself God. Wow. Now, what is that familiar with? It says the man of sin will wow. go into the holy place. He will set up the image. Mm -hmm. He will declare himself God. Mm -hmm. The end time culture is a culture of man declaring himself God. That happens in many ways. It's already happening. Happens in many ways. One is arrogance and pride. Another is saying, I have no nothing above me. I am whether it's the Supreme Court, whether it's government, there is no God above me. We are not I'm not under God. I can make my own rules. Mm -hmm. I can redefine morality, because only God can do that. I can redefine what is right. I can make it wrong. I can redefine what is sexually immoral. I can redefine marriage. I can redefine anything I want. Mm-hmm. That's man as God. It says, the, it says that Antiochus and the Antiochus will seek to change ways, change times, change seasons, change customs. So when man starts doing that, you're in a dangerous time. You're in the time of the Antichrist. You're in the spirit of the Antichrist. This never happened before, where man just redefines and redefines. But the thing is that, so you've got Zeus. Now, now, Zeus is a symbol back then for this thing. Now, now uh, there's a myth about Zeus. And there's a myth that says this. It says Zeus took the form of a bull, and he carried away this woman, kind of, you know, he's trying to seduce her. Zeus was, these are the gods of the Greeks, immoral. And he carries her away to himself. So you have a picture of a woman riding a beast. Okay, <laughs> this is linked. You got Hanukkah. The name of the woman who rode the beast, and you see, because you see in Revelation, you see a woman riding a beast. Yes. The name of the woman in the Greek myth about Zeus, and Zeus is the, is the anti-god of Hanukkah, of the Antichrist. The name of the woman is, she, her name was called, she was a princess called Europa. From this woman, you get the word Europe. Yes. From that myth of Zeus, that's where it comes from. It comes from the myth of this god of Hanukkah, this, this, this anti-god, seducing Europe, Europa, who, become, who, is then turned, who is then with this one. What do you see in the book of Revelation? You see this revived Roman Empire, and you see it has been seduced. You see, it's called harlot. It's called, sure. it's called which you can take in a number of ways. One of the things is that, one is that she herself is unfaithful, as if it was a woman who once knew God. As, as if it was before this, there was a turn. It's, again, it's, the, it's worse than not knowing. It's worse than non-Christian. It's anti-Christian because it's turned mother of harlots of adultery. She, she has gone away from God. And so here, here, even in Hanukkah, you have a pointing to Europe or the revived Roman Empire that the same God of Hanukkah is behind the very name of Europa, Europe, this myth of Europe. The woman writing beast. And so when, as, as, as Europe is, has been uniting, and that's still there, but the symbol they have is a woman riding a beast. It's Europa riding Zeus, which is of Hanukkah and the Antichrist. 
Yeah. How do people who said this is wrong, always said this is wrong, and then all of a sudden switch without any reason, and also now this is okay, now it's right, now if you speak against it like we were speaking, oh. you're going to be persecuted. Yeah. How did that happen? You know, the things on, te- even network television would not allow things by their own codes, would never allow things. Right. And, ne- and every year, it's one step farther. It's like that, the story of the frog that gets boiled, yeah. doesn't realize it's so, so it, keeps, it keeps progressing and people just go along with it. Yeah. And that's what happened with Antiochus. It's that people started going along with it. Hey, we've got to go along with it. Everybody's doing it. Every, it's the way of the future. It's old-fashioned to resist this. But what happened? You had a few people, you had a minority, which we'll get into, this is the this is the plan. God actually gives the secrets of victory. We'll, we'll right. get into it. But they, they the ones who held tight said no. We're holding to God. They kept saying mm-hmm. they, they kept saying the Maccabees kept saying we're not going to go against we're not going to go against our God. Mm-hmm. He's right. We're going to hold on even if it costs us our lives. Yeah. We're going to hold on no matter what. We're going to stand no matter what. Even if we don't know how to fight, we're going to fight. We're going to do. And God is going to be with us. And one way or the other, we did the right thing. And God honored that. Yeah. So that's what happens. The people who say, I'm going to hold on. But they, they said, I don't care about the majority. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to hold on. That's where the answer is. But those are the ones who are persecuted. But those are the ones who God's hand is upon. So we have to be strong here. Okay, now, there is a plan for the saints, right? Yes. To overcome. Yes. I want you to make this we'll really clear. That. Yes. I, yes, am I there t- is. Am I jumping Here's ahead? Hope. Yeah. So I just, just want to make it through this time. Because <laughs> you all know it's truth what he's preaching and teaching. Yes. But we, would, God always gives an answer. Yes, He does. And so I want he you. He does. To I'm going to get. What, the, what Antiochus did is he declared the word of God illegal. So he so he said, burn the scrolls. Oh boy. And whatever he said whatever you're doing, it's illegal. It becomes a crime. What was what, what was the way of, of everybody knew this, this is the truth. Now it becomes a crime. First it becomes unpopular, then it becomes a crime. So he says they tore up any scrolls, as Maccabees, of the law, they tore it up, burned. Whoever was found with a scroll of the covenant, whoever observed the law, was condemned to death. So they used their power against Israel, against all those who were caught each month in the cities. They warred against the word of God. So one of the things you see, and they also warred against prayer. So what do you see in the culture of Antichrist as it gets closer? It becomes it starts subtly at first a war against prayer, a war against the Word of God, and it starts. We what we talked about this last time to this year, 2012, is the 50th anniversary when America did this little act of taking prayer and the Bible, the Word, out of the school. Now look at what's in school. Now look at what's in school. Look what ha- what came in. It never stays. It's always it never stays neutral. You take that out, Antichrist comes in. But. The Hanukkah actually is so awesome because it gives the key for the people of God, the keys that are going to make you strong mm-hmm. and stand. Mm-hmm. What, and the keys were with the Maccabees. And that, that is, that, and what was it about the Maccabees? What did they do that made them from nothing? Little bunch of, they were hillbillies. They were the hillbillies of Israel. They, weren't, they, weren't, you know, they were outside the fringes, and yet they became, in the end, they would become the priests of Israel. By the time, they would become the leaders mm-hmm. because God used them. So what, so what things did they have? That's what we need. Number one, number one, they had no. They decided no more, no compromise with sin anymore. We can't go along with this anymore. They say the, the, the guy, the, the father said, "That's it. I'm not. I can't do. It. I'm gonna." They drew a line in the sand. Said, "That's it. From here on in, just like we were issuing a wake-up call. What's happening in America? We gotta wake up. We gotta say that's it. We can't fool around anymore. We can't. We can't play play church. We can't do this as things as usual. We have to draw a line. Says that's it. Well, if you're ever gonna become gonna become the person that God wants you to be, it's gotta be now. And whatever, if there's something in your life, and don't get it out now. Let's just do. It. It's too late. So that's what they did, and that's what God anointed. God anointed it. Secondly, they were the minority, but they didn't care that they were in the minority. They said, even though if we're in the minority, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're going to stand strong to God. And they didn't, they, what they did is, they didn't, they actually fought with the Word of God. They actually took the Word of God and said, we're going to go by the Word of God. Listen, God was faithful to our fathers. He's going to be faithful to us. So they said, it doesn't matter. They said, actually, there's a famous part in Maccabees where he looks at, they look at the, the they're outnumbered. And, and, and the leader of the Maccabees says, it doesn't matter if there's many or few. It doesn't matter how many there are. All that matters is that we're with God and God yes. with us. That's all that matters. And they won. And so they're always outnumbered. So in the end times, believers will be outnumbered. But if we have the attitude, it doesn't matter what the number, it doesn't matter what the odds are, never give up hope. God is so much bigger. God wins, you know, in the end. So the point is, be strong. Don't look at the circumstance. Look at God, always. Don't look at the circumstance. Look, be aware of it, but don't believe that that's the final story. God is the final story. That's all that matters. And he gives victory. 
They, the Maccabees, also for us, is they went against the spirit of the times. They said, we don't want to be politically correct. We don't want to be in step with this fashion because it's, fa- it's, it's going to be out of date anyway. We want to be in time with God. Whatever God said, we're going with it. And they did not, wow. they did not bend the word of God to fit their circumstances. They bent their life and their circumstance to fit the word of God. God says it, we do it. doesn't matter what they said. So, you know, I was told, as I was coming here, I was coming here and I was told by a good brother saying, you know, there are believers who are confused. They're saying, but everybody's doing this. So they start weakening. I said, no, this is the time where you don't get weak, you get stronger. It's where you've got to become more radical. They had to become more radical. That's that's why they won. They risked every. They separated themselves. They went to the mountains. That's part of it too. We got to keep separate. Impact the world, but be separate from its from its getting affected. We have to impact the world. The other thing is they learned to become warriors. Fight, they weren't fighters. They learned how to become warriors. Now you said something in your teaching, on your tapes. I think it was. You said they drew a line in the sand. Do you yes, remember saying yes, that? Yes, that's exactly what, did, what they did. What did that mean? That, that means, that, and, it, and you could see the moment, and it, it comes in, you know, because if you never draw that line, you're finished. If you keep on moving, inching, inching, inch, you're finished. There comes a time where you so have to say... So, you mean you put up a standard? So you this, say, this, time this you say, is... That, that is it. I am not even going to... You know what? I'm, the enemy's trying to... I'm, I'm going to... That's it. From here on in, I'm living all out. That's, that's what, that's what Mattathias said. I, it's all out for God. I don't care what it is. I'm not going to play around. You know, because everybody says in their mind, you know, well, one day I'm going to be that person of God I, I, God wants me to be. I'm going to do it one day. It never, the day never comes. You know, and we, this is a wake-up call. The day's got to be today. You've got to start today. Not that you're perfect in yourself, but that you're going to say, that's it, God. I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to live for you all out. No compromise. No indulging. I don't need that. It's too late. And the world needs me to be a light. Right. To be a light, right. I have to put this out and I've got to draw a line in the sand. Yeah. That's wow. it. Yeah. Yeah, the point is God doesn't never want us never wants us to be discouraged. No. He wants us always to be encouraged. If the fight gets bigger, okay, we got a we got a bigger power to do it. We got a, right. a bigger thing to do. That's okay. The challenge right. is bigger. Bigger. We we have a bigger thing to do. They were out number two, but it says that Judah Maccabee fought with the sword of Apollonius, which was his enemy. So it says that you take the things of the enemy. I'm going to turn around. The enemy throws us against. I'm going to turn it around. You take the, this comes against me. I'm going to turn it around for good. I'm going to use everything in my life for God. Even if it's a, a trouble, I'm going to get closer to God. Whatever it is, I'm going to use it because I'm I know the side I'm on. And so, so the, as far as the sword, the Bible speaks about it. I mean, the, as far as, you know, the Bible says, we have a sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Right. We've got to be using that Word yeah. of God, you right. know, holding it and fighting with it. It's not just knowing it, but fighting, use it in your life against it. It's, it talks about the shield of faith. We've got to be using that. If we don't, we're going to get those arrows coming. Got to use that shield. The helmet of salvation, our mind, get our mind, the, the thought life. It's got to be girded, and God will bless it. You, you know, everybody's got thoughts all over the place, but if you, we, we train our mind for God, it actually, He'll, he'll use it. So are we going to have warfare from now on, probably? Well, we're always... Before they come in, we, Lord. We, well, we've always had... We always I know, will, we all, but now, I, it, now I, it gets, it gets we bigger. All, we all want to go to the rest camp or something for a while, don't we, sometimes? But, well, so, <laughs> but you, you said in your teaching, you carry on this warfare with joy and joyfulness. You just said something. I was just going to go there, but let me tell you something. I mean, it, this drives it, me crazy the, the, because <laughs> I get discouraged sometimes, and then I feel under conviction because I got discouraged. Because the warfare does get a little see, you can't crazy. Be the enemy wants you to be discouraged. It says God is not ever the God of encouragement. He's the God of I mean, discouragement. Discourage. He's the God of encouragement. And you, you start out with, but you always end, you always end up on fire. Right. So, so the yeah, point is, the point is, you know, the point is, you just start going, and that's the point. You know, you get your you get your blow, and then you recover, and then you get stronger. But interesting that you just said that because. In Maccabees, this historical, they have an interesting word here. It says that, listen, this is, you just said it. I don't know if you realize this. It says they, the Maccabees, they carried on the war joyfully. Oh, that actually says that in the account. Is that good? They ca- it's very good. They carried, it's not just. It's not just serve the Lord, serve the Lord with joy. It's not just fight the fight, fight the fight with joy because it's a good fight. You know, God, God is entrusting you to do something great. Every time you fight, it's not just for yourself. You're a minister. You know, we got a problem. It's not about, oh, i got a problem. It's, hey, God's chosen me to deal with a problem, to be able to do this with God's power. It's a joy if I just take it. It's, yeah. it's not about my survival. Right. It's about God's glory. So right. what do I have to worry about? Everything is to, could be joy. Yeah. I'm here to just do it. Lord, let, let oh, me show your great. power. Let me just do it. Be faithful. And I'm one. That's and all I have to do. the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's our strength. Right. It's the power of the Lord. And joy is, joy is powerful. Oh, you know, that, that God will use a joyful man, will use an encouraged man, and he'll get the one who's discouraged. He'll get us up again to do that. But we need to have joy. We need to encourage. It says David strengthened himself. Yeah. You got you know, to strengthen. Yeah. Oh, my soul strengthened. I remember when we, when we 
we were supposed to go into our building, and, it, and the town voted it down completely, and it was impossible to do it. And we just, and, and we, there was no hope at all. And I just, I just out of the blue, it was one day we were wiped out. And the next day, it's just, it came up, said, we're going to fight this fight. Who cares how to do it? We're out for God. It's all out. And it's impossible. And God did the total miracle and did it. God loves that. God loves when you, when you got to the point and you don't think you can go on anymore. Right. Yeah. And you just say, you know what? I'm going to go on another step just for you, God. And that's usually when the breakthrough comes, right after the, right after the end is when you go beyond it, the breakthrough comes. So this is everything you're saying is part of this. Oh, Joy, yeah. it doesn't stop. You know, they, they overcame. They overcame in the book of Revelation yeah. by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the Lamb. And, and they, we need joy. Joy is a powerful thing in God. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're out of time. Oh. Could, I want you to land this plane. <laughs> they, they live by the word. They fought by the word. And one of the things that's in Daniel now that speaks about this battle, it says they knew their God and so they resisted. They knew their God. Those yeah. who truly know their God, we, we know what God is like. We, don't, we, we know the world, but we know God. Mm. And yes. that, that's we're going to resist. The end of the story is they, they, cleanse, they cleanse all things. It's an end time picture because what happens at the end of the end times? They come to the temple. They cleanse everything. Well, what's it? They come and they bring redemption. Well, the final picture is of... Messiah himself. He's the one who's going to come to the temple. He's the one who's going to come to this world, and he's going to cleanse this world. He's going to redeem this, cleanse Israel, cleanse the world. He is the real Hanukkah person. He's the one who renews the temple, renews everything to God, brings it back to God. And interesting, because the word Maccabee, of course in Hebrew, is, means hammer. They were called the hammers of God because they just smashed everything. They were a hammer God. And so the one thing is at the end times, we're not supposed to be, you know, we're meek to God, but to, the, but to darkness, we've got to be strong. And so we are to be the hammers of God. And when you're a hammer, you get, you get pounded, you know, but, but you do great things. The power to break through. They were the hammers of God. And the other thing is, they were also the, the symbol of Hanukkah. I don't know if we'll have time to light it. If not, we can light yeah, it we tomorrow can. and we can, do a, we can do a special thing. But the lights of the, the symbol of this is the, is the symbol of Hanukkah, end time symbol, because, it, because the symbol is lights in the darkness. When the dark gets darker, the lights get brighter. What happened is when, we, when the lights went out in our house, you know, we got lights on, yeah. those little lights light up the entire house. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, so, so when we are, when we live in, in time, and when everything is going as status quo, mm -hmm. we are lights, okay, it's like, it's like a candle in the noon. But when the dark comes and that candle's still shining, it's harder to shine, but now you're saying we're going to shine anyway, you become a light to light up the world. So even though it's more radical, it's against you, you've got to be more radical and they're more against you, that light that you hold up, that word of God, that whatever you do for God is going to light up more. It's going to be more radical. The light burns in the darkness and it cannot extinguish it. And so in the end times we are lights. It says they will shine. What does Daniel say at the end? That those who win many to the Lord will shine like the stars of heaven. Right. And do you know something? This, this menorah, do you know the symbol of Israel, end time Israel, Israel's back. End time Israel is not the star of David. It's this menorah. That is the seal of Israel. It's the light that shines in the darkness. End times. End times. Book of Revelation opens up with seven candlesticks linked to this menorah. So this is the sign. And the point is, shine brighter. And the principle is also that the light is, remember, the light is not passive. The light is an active agent on the world. We don't get, we don't stop. We don't get defense. We don't get defensive. We, are con we must continue to shine and impact the world for God. It will never stop. If we keep going, we'll keep, he'll keep going with us. This is, we are to impact the world for God. That never stops. With persecution, remember, the greatest believers in the, the history of the age happened in the same exact age. They got radical. They got, they got on fire for God. They were imperfect. But God used them. They changed the world. Peter, Paul, they were the lights. At the end, it comes back to the beginning. That's how it is. So if it's blowing down there too much... Now, this is the seven branch, which actually represents the actual menorah of the temple. Let's see if this stays. If not, if you can just Maybe kind of put it, it or... however, yeah. And this is, this is the blessing in the language of Jesus of Hanukkah. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kedishanu ba-mitzvotav, hahem ba-azman ha Amen. Blessed are you, God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us in the lights, in the light of God, commands us to light the lights of God. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Sha'asa nisim lavoteinu bayamim, Ha'hem ba'azman hazem. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who did great wonders for our ancestors at this time in that place, the God of dedication, the God of Hanukkah, the God of the light that shines in the darkness and that 